Hi there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be working on our little bit of a Frankenstein assembled Fallen. Uh, these are the Dark Angels. I've been, uh, I've, you know, the, the lost and forgotten Dark Angels. They thought were traitors but are maybe? Question mark. I've been reading the Gathering Storm stuff and it is so good. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to getting these guys dressed up and on the field. And we're going to first start off with a little bit of theory. We're going to talk about kind of the old school days of the Dark Angels to get a really good picture of what's going on with the pre-heresy stuff. And then we're going to get painting right away based on that theory. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. So to get a grasp on how we're going to put these colors together, I'm going to look at some of the original Space Marine box art. This was the first version of Epic. This came out in 1989, and it shows the Dark Angels struggling uh, horribly as guys are blowing up in the back against some crazy enemy. I love this picture. It's one of my favorite pieces of artwork, and uh, it depicts our Dark Angels in kind of a pre-heresy thing, taking the fight to other, other Space Marines. So a couple things I want to note here, obviously the black armor, uh, the white tactical symbols on the one arm, uh, the numbering system, and uh, also on the sergeant here you're going to see that we've got this uh, like quartered uh, checker box, uh, or checkered uh, pattern, and of course this kind of gold or yellowy uh, you know, corner with the sword, and the rest we're going to look at maybe some other source materials to see what we can come up with for the sergeant. So. I love this picture. I think it's really, really cool. And uh, yeah, uh, next one up that we're going to take a look at is our Angels of Death Codex. Now, this was our, this was the second edition codex. This was the first uh, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, dual codex thing that came out. And give a lot of personality to these armies. Uh, I, I know my first army was a Dark Angels army, so this was just absolutely pure, pure gold for me. And so when we look in here, uh, one of the things I want to take a look at, of course, is this this idea of heraldry. So you can see here that under the company master shell here, their personal heraldry, they've got the quartered uh, pieces in there, they've got the checkerboard on one side, kind of the dark black field on the other, and then they've got these two lighter colored fields. So we're going to lean on that uh, pretty heavily. That's how we're going to come up with our layout for our sergeant. Now, what I want to show you here is this veteran sergeant. Uh, we can see here that the Dark Angels were really big on not only the iconography on the shoulder pads, but they also painted their knee pads as well. And you can hear that, see here this uh, veteran sergeant of the third company. He's got his knee pad painted up in the third company heraldry. So we knew which company he's from. Now, the last page I'm going to show you here is because our fallen are going to be coming from these different companies. It's just this kind of hodgepodge of dudes that kind of came together that left the, the Dark Angels at the time. You're going to see that we've got uh, our third company, fourth, fifth, 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth companies, and you can see that they've all got these different kinds of looks to them. So the ninth company will probably just do a vertical stripe across a knee. I really like the 5th company and the 4th company just because it gives us an idea to, it gives it allows us to kind of add a little bit more personality to these black armored kind of very muted guys. So uh, there's the 6th company as well, which is kind of a half pad. Some of these are pretty easy. So we'll incorporate some of these into our, our setup on our painting of our guys. So I'm going to get these uh, these fallen here all primed up and we'll be right back. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we see here that we've got our guys all primed up in this matte black army painter spray. And uh, they look a little shiny under the lights, but it's actually not too bad. They're a little they're a little less glossy in, in, in real life, so it's actually not, uh, not too bad at all here. So uh, what we're going to do now is start with a dry brush here of Eschen Grey. Now the deal behind this is, is that it, it when you're painting black, you're not actually painting black, you're actually painting more of a charcoal color. And then when you wash it and low light it and all of that, it actually works out a little bit better. You can actually see the lines and the definition in the armor. So you're always working with this really kind of deep charcoal -y, charcoal -y gray. So I'm just going to take this dry brush here and I'm just going to work it up and down. And I'm going to work my way around all of the models, just making sure that I get a nice, decent dry brush. Okay, we can now see that the boys are all nice and charcoal-y here. Uh, you can see that we've got, you know, it still looks black, but there's just a little bit of highlight. And of course, that will tamp down when we do our wash later, so it works out, uh, works out pretty well. Next up, we're going to be doing our red. So the problem with black armies is we've got lots and lots and lots of 
little drabness and kind of lack of color. And although that's kind of cool, we really may have to make sure that we, we accent things with lots and lots of pop. So uh, I'm going to use my fist in red here and I'm going to do uh, basically all of the weapon cowlings. I'm going to do the, the sergeant's robe here. And so let's get these guys out of the way. And I'm going to do about half of the frames on the backpack. So it should be good. So I'm going to start off now. Obviously, I'm just going to work around with his robe here. I'm going to leave uh, a little bit of the, there's like a leather strap in here, which of course, you know, black is great for uh, videoing for sure. So I'm going to work my way around with this. I'll do two super thin coats just to kind of make sure I have that nice even coverage over all of his robe. That'll include up here and all of that. And anybody without any kind of detail, uh, for example, uh, this guy here, he doesn't have a robe. Uh, he doesn't have a finial, anything like that. So anybody without any of the, uh, you know, kind of extra detail, I'm gonna make sure I that provide a little bit of pop to him uh, just by doing this back piece of the, of the backpack here. So the part where the bolts are here kind of comes up and around with the venting and then it extends way up and over, way up and over to the top here. So I'll make sure I do that on about every second guy or you know anybody who doesn't have any kind of extra detail. So that will go up there. And then of course, I'll go through and do all of the, uh, the weapon, just kind of culling around the weapons here. So uh, with our bolters, this cover that goes over top, I'll do that all in Wazdaka. Uh, sorry, Mephist in red. And then I'll carry that forward with our bolt pistol, uh, our, our flamer over here, our bolt pistols, all of that stuff. Okay, so we've got all the red now uh, on here. It looks really good. Uh, the one thing I didn't mention was that I wanted to do the purity seals as well. So the heads of the purity seals, the wax seal part of the purity seals. I wanted to make sure I got those in red as well. So the next up here, we're going to use our Screaming Skull and we're going to be going after any of the iconography. So anything typically that we would go with a gold kind of finish to um, on, on these guys here. So any of the, get these out of the way. So on here, any of the Aquiles in the, in the middle here, so anything that we would kind of do gold with, say, an Ultramarines or something like that, I wanted to make sure that we conveyed that they're not quite Imperial, but they're Imperial. You know what I mean? We still have all the same iconography and stuff, but uh, they're not 100% into the regal elements of the Imperium. So I just want to go in here, and so we're going to be finishing them with a Screaming Skull. So that looks pretty solid. Uh, any of the pieces on the heads here. It's super light. Any of the finials that are on top, again, anything that would typically be in gold, I'm going to do in this screaming skull. I'll do all of the shoulder markings here. Uh, we've got, do, 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 do. We've got a sword over here that needs to be done. We've got uh, this nice kind of dark angels piece here. So just this nice, I need a little bit more paint, might be too watered down. Um, just all these different markings here, and I'm going to do the uh, purity seals as well. Uh, these purity seals here, I'll just do them in the Screaming Skull as well. All right, so there's detail on the backpack, there is uh, detail on the Aquiles on the chests and all that. Um, obviously with the Mark IVs, we're going to be doing that in a metallic, so I won't touch that. And I'll, uh, I'll keep plugging along here. All right, we can see that we've got all this bone colored iconography up and running, uh, which looks really, really sharp. Uh, it's finally bringing in a little bit more uh, contrast to the black. Now, obviously we want black armor, but we want lots and lots of detail as well. We've done our purity seals all throughout. Uh, we've done our iconography all on the back of the backpacks and even on the swords, anything that I would typically do in like a, a kind of a gold, just to have some big kind of icons. Uh, obviously it's it's nice to have the bone, it's a little bit of a, a variety. So uh, next up, what we're going to be working on is uh, kind of the bulk of the work here. And I'm going to be using our lead belcher. Okay, and I'm going to be going after anything uh, functional or metallic. So in the case of the Space Marines here, we're going to do, get these boys out. Do, 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 do. So what we're going to work on now is anything that is functional. So inside of the 
elbows, any of the joints. Now these will be all over. They'll be in the shoulders. Uh, they'll be at the back of the legs, all of that. So we'll work on all of those. Uh, also, we'll be working on any of the swords. So we'll do both the, the sword itself and then the, the hilt of the sword down here. Okay, and then I actually might go over this tailpiece with bone. I think I'll do that. Um, and then we'll go over any of the the cabling on the chest. So we'll bring in the Mark IV. I'll just kind of finish that up. So any of the cabling on the chest in here we'll do in the lead belcher. We'll do the face of the Mark IV, uh, just because he doesn't really stand out all that much. So just a light brushing on the face of the Mark IV, and of course we'll wash that all the way through. Just to give him a little bit more personality and make him stand out from the other Marines. We'll do all of the weapons that isn't the cowling. I'm gonna go with a gold head on the flamer here, but everything else we'll do. The tank and all that. Uh, we'll do the bolt pistol. On the backpack we'll go through and we'll do all of the cabling. The exhaust vents down at the bottom and kind of most importantly one of the design decisions that I wanted to do here was to go in and all of the these kind of stabilization thruster event things at the back I'm going to do them all in this lead belcher so that kind of metallic -y, silvery finish all right so picking out any of the details that are metallic even sneaking in behind here on the backpacks, just sneaking right in here. And again, the wash will restore most of this detail when we're done. So I'll work my way around. Uh, obviously, we'll need to do things like the lightning claws. And so I'll go through and finish up all the lightning claws and all the workings up here. Just do a little bit of an overbrush over top, just so we get, again, a little bit of definition there, which is nice any of the joints obviously, any of the cables. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and in all the all the edges of all the pauldrons I'm going to do in the silver as well. So each of the pauldrons is going to get this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work my way around, uh, make sure I catch all of the different elements, everything from the backpacks to uh, you know, the chain, the jewelry, all that, and anything that I want to be metal, I'm going to do in this lead belcher. Okay, so we can see now with the silver coming in, the lead belcher, it's actually brought up the brightness of the models quite a bit, which is really, really cool. Goes great with the red, nice, nice kind of gothic, old school Dark Angels feel. Awesome. Uh, next up, we're going to do uh, just a very simple coating here. We're going to do Steel Legion Drab, and we're going to do Steel Legion Drab on any of the holsters. Uh, any of the belts, and when I say belts, even the power armor in my mind has belts. I don't know why, I think it's cool. It's pseudo plastic belt thing. Um, all right, so the easy one here, of course, is going to be the belt on the robe. And I'm just going to do my two thin coats, so the belt all the way around. Okay, and then at the backs of all the Marines as well, uh, they've, got a, they've got a belt, and I know it could be steel, it could be anything, but... Uh, I'm going to do that belt as well. And then, of course, any of the power armor in here as well. We're going to do these guys here, just any of the belts themselves. I'll just do a coat around. And, of course, we'll also do our holsters. So, again, maybe not specifically a leather, but a plastic leather bulletproof Kevlar substitute something so that it's almost like a fabric because it's got folds in the fabric and all of that. So I'll continue my way around and we'll get those all done. So after the leather's done, we've only got really one piece left to do and that's going to be the gold. Now, most of our decoration here we've done with either lead belcher or our screaming skull. Um, so you know, all the iconography, all that, there's not really a lot of gold on these guys. However, there is going to be some gold, so I'm going to use uh, Retributor Armor, and I'm just going to do two pieces. One is going to be the nameplate on uh, any of the Marines here. They've got the nameplate, so I'm just going to do that in the Retributor Armor. Nice bright plate here. 
I'm gonna be super careful. Nice. And if we reference our artwork at the beginning there, you'll see that of course they have the gold plates as well. And then the other piece that I'm going to do is just the head on the flamer. Um, that kind of coppery, golden, uh, lots of heat type tarnish. And then we're going to, you know, of course, dry brush this after the wash with black as well, make it look all nice and smoky and awesome. Actually, before we finish now, we have to do the face. It's, uh, I almost forgot him. He's just kind of hiding in here. Uh, I'm just going to use a little bit of Cadian flesh tone, uh, super thin, super light coats, sneak in there, and I'm just going to base up the flesh of the face. He was all hidden under there. I just about didn't see him. Okay, the boys are all looking pretty sharp. We've got all of our base coating done and it's looking really, really solid. So next up, we're going to do my wash. I just uh, I just finished up the bases here because I like to wash those at the same time. And I'm going to use my little custom wash here. It's 25% Nuln Oil, 25% Agrax Earthshade, and 50% regular floor polish, like little floor wax type thing. Um, so, Get my brush kind of dampened up here. So I'm just going to get going in there. Now, obviously, I don't want to do any kind of pooling or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to be very gentle. Now, though, the floor wax acts as quite the flow aid, which is great. So you'll see that it gets into all the nooks and crannies. Now, you can do this with regular um, straight up null oil as well. But I like that little bit of brown in it. I think it just kind of dirties everything out. And yeah, I'll keep going through. I'll make sure all the guys are all washed up nice. I'll make sure there's no pooling. I'll just use my brush to kind of soak up any excess here. But you'll see the black really tamped down, that charcoal really tamped down to kind of a, a working, working black. So, all right, I'll keep going. I'll be right back. Okay, the wash has dampened down the black. It's really brought out all the contrast and all the metallics. Looks awesome, all the bone colored, uh, ornaments and ornamentation and iconography all there uh, are looking really really good uh, I think the chest pieces came out really really nicely so uh, we're gonna start working on our highlights now and uh, we're gonna start right away with our metallic so I'm gonna go in with our rune fang steel and I'm going to go over shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. I'm going to go over uh, basically anything that was our metallic -y lead belcher color and I'm just going to go through here and it'll be tink, 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 and it'll be uh, everything on the shoulder pads, uh, you name it. So, and it's just going to be just a simple edge highlight just to bring that little bit of pop back, put that actually in the frame. So it's just gonna be this little bit of an edge highlight. And then uh, along the tops of the barrels, because the light's gonna be above, I'm just gonna do a little line across the top. And just going around edge highlighting. Now, uh, if you take a little bit of paint off, not so much a dry brush, but just kind of an overbrush, a wet dry brush, if you will. And I'm just going to go over top very, very lightly, all the ribbing on the cabling here, on the mask. Let's go over that. Obviously, you don't want to flood the, the detail in with paint. So you just want to keep it nice and simple. Uh, on the backs, uh, right on the vents up here. And again, just an overbrush on anything rounded. You don't want like a really specific edge highlight on that. Uh, on the lightning claws, which is going to be our other our other piece, lightning claws and swords, uh, again you're just going to be doing an edge highlight uh, but if you you can go a little a little heavy at the top and just a razor thin one at the bottom and you get that nice kind of bladed effect and for these ones here you can just kind of brush over top just on where the, uh, the the corners, the angles are there. And yeah, so anything that is, you know, the chains, anything like that, we're going to do uh, on all the swords. To do the swords, I'm going to get a touch more paint here. Uh, to do the swords, I'm just going to do the center line, but I'm only going to do it on the bottom, or sorry, the, the top, the, the, the final third of the sword, like this. And then I'll do the edge highlight around as well. All right, anything metallic is gonna get this treatment. And I'll be right back. All right, so with that highlight of the silver in there, we can see we've got lots and lots of the shine back, lots of contrast with the black. So again, really liking the way it's turning out. Uh, moseying on, we're gonna start with our Screaming Skull. And I'm just going to do just a, an edge highlight over all the bone bits, uh, all the iconography, all of that. 
So I'll pull these guys out of here. Do, 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 do. And anywhere we have any kind of detail where we've gone after. So obviously there's something a little special here, like on the, on the shoulder pad. We'll go after that. Just again, just touching up the edges. I want to leave that depth and darkness in there a little bit. Uh, and for the iconography up top, the, the finials up here, I'm just going to do get a little bit of paint off the brush. Just this kind of sideways brushing over our icons. So I'll do it over all the aquile on the chest, anything with the iconography here, and we'll see how that looks. Okay, with the bone colors all done now on all the iconography and all that, it looks really nice. It's uh, bringing back lots of brightness. Uh, really digging it. So next up is going to be our red, and we're going to just go over top of the majors again with our Mephiston red, just kind of restoring a good chunk of the uh, of of the of the color back because obviously we've shaded it down quite a bit. I'll just leave these two guys here. Okay, so. Again, just uh, just going over the majors here, uh, and all I'm going to do is just pick out the major highlights, uh, leaving where the wash has settled, and just bringing back, you can see how it restores a whole pile of that color. And of course, with the hood here, just going over there, trying to leave as much of that deep red from the wash that we can. Blend that all together. Okay, so we'll go over that, and then we're going to come back and do a just an edge highlight uh, around all the stuff after as well. So uh, just just the majors, and for this guy here for the backpack, just going over the major spots here, leaving as much of that recessed color as we can. You'll see we got that nice gradation between the dark and the lighter reds now and then of course all the weapon casings here so just going in and doing the majors of the weapon casings leaving some shading as we see it okay following up with the red now we're going to do a highlight of wild rider red on all of our weapon casings so just an edge highlight make sure i got lots of don't have too much paint on my brush here, so I'll do an edge highlight over all of the weapon casings. Painting around. Looks good. And then, of course, we'll do our purity seals. We'll go around that and just kind of a, just a touch edge highlight on there, just to give it a little bit of highlight. And then we'll also do our robes, our, our tabard here on our sergeant. So I'll just just pick out the edges of all the red and we'll continue along. All right, that draws our red to a completion. It looks really nice and bright and vibrant. Uh, again, the trick with black armor, don't have too much black. I think that's the, that's the key. It really shows off the black that we have so much color on top of it. So now less colorful, but uh, more necessary, a uh, Steel Legion drab. We're going to do the holsters and the belts for our dudes. And I'm just gonna grab a little bit of Steel Legion Drab on my brush here. Get these guys out of the way. And we're just going to do a first, well, kind of a overbrush to get the color back here. So we'll do our Steel Legion Drab just to get a little bit of color back in our belts here. And then we'll come in with uh, Carrick Stone in a second. So nice, and then we'll do our holsters as well. So again, just leaving a lot of the shade, but you see I had a little bit of, you can see that I had a little bit of pooling in here. So I'm just gonna counteract that pooling a little bit just by kind of doing a striation up from there. Try it with some paint this time, there we go. And that way we can keep a little bit of our folds and fabric look without having it be too dark. All right, now on top of that, I'm going to go over all the belts and all the Marines, and we'll come back and do our highlight. Okay, with that dark Steel Legion Drab going back in there, we're just going to do a final highlight on all of our leather workings with Carrick Stone. And it's just gonna be a sweet and quick edge highlight, uh, just on the edges, 
So uh, I'm just going to grab just that edge right there, and that edge right there. Okay, a little tricky, had to get a different angle on it. And of course for our holsters, I'll do the same thing. I'll just pick out the edge, Oops. not so gently on that one. So I can always grab some water and a wet brush and just tamp that down. A little wipe of the finger here. Blends it, right? It's all blending, it's all blending. And then I'll just work my way around all the holsters and the belts, just doing a simple quick and dirty edge highlighting. Okay, all the holsters are done, the red is done, the bone is done. Now we're saving the best, question mark, worst, worst, best, worst for last. Uh, we're going to be doing our edge highlight on our armor with Eshing Gray. So, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to start, now a lot of the edge highlighting makes total sense. So, if I uh, move these guys out of the way, a lot of it makes sense. So all you have to do, of course, is just do our standard edge highlighting where we take our brush and we just pick out the very edges of the armor. And because it's eshing gray, it's nice and dark. So we still get, so we can see the gray definition there, but it actually calms down quite a bit. Um, on anything rounded, we just want to do just kind of a gentle overbrush on top. Okay, just to kind of bring out that uh, that charcoaly nature of of the black. Now it still looks black, but we've got a little bit of of, of, of shading left over from the wash. Okay, cool. Now we run into other problems when we get into things like the rounded pauldrons. So what I'm going to do, and this takes a little bit of practice, and we can kind of cheat a little bit, but uh, we're going to go in with a marker after and just kind of cheat just a shade. So what I'm going to do now is, make sure this is in focus, I'm just going to draw a very thin line all the way around the edge. Now, it doesn't have to be a perfect edge like you see in the G-Dub videos and all that, but just as long as you're just kind of in that edge. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our Micron pen after, and we'll just guarantee that we have that little bit of definition there. So you just want a little bit of that charcoal coming through on the edge. All right, it was a little bit of work, but we got the black done and it looks awesome. So obviously that Eshin Gray just gives that little bit of highlight in there. Uh, and it actually is very difficult to low light black. So we built up the, the charcoal color and then we washed it back down. So the net effect is this nice black where you can see all the detail. Uh, you'll see here on the helmets that I've gone in and edged it with the Eshin Gray. And if I've gone over it all, I just went back in with the Abaddon Black and just touched it back up again. So looks really nice, nice, sharp, clean edges and a very easy to see black. So now we've got only got a few things left to do. We've got our uh, faces, obviously. We're going to work on the lenses for the helmets. But for the very short term here, um, my next step is going to be the flesh on the face. So I'll start off with a little bit of Cadian flesh. And I'm just going to do the nose, the cheekbones. And again, that light is going to be coming from above. So just the nose, the cheekbones, the forehead, a little bit of the upper lip there. And then I'm going to use a little bit of Kislev flesh just for the actual highlight itself. So again, on the nose, on the chin, and just doing the edges of the face. Now one of the last pieces for the power armor here is going to be the lenses in the eye sockets. So I'm just going to start with a little bit of moot green and just fill in the eye sockets. And just make sure I have lots of control here. But I'm just going to wash the eyes again just so we get a little bit of definition there. And I'll suck out any extra with my brush. With the lenses all done, um, we're essentially finished. One of the optional finishing details I like to bring into it is using a Micron, basically an art pen, engineering pen, what have you. 
and they're available at most kind of hobby shops and, and all that but uh, here's what I want to show you it's it's this is fantastic it's not so great for the organic stuff like the tyranids things like that but it's really awesome for things like power armor where you have these really nice hard edges and even when you look at the pauldrons you have these nice ridges that you can just kind of run your pen along so uh, hopefully this picks up on the camera here but you can see I've got a little bit of the charcoal -y eshing gray going all the way to the end however if I take my pen and I just run my pen just on the inside of the pauldron here it's very subtle but you get this black line that runs on the inside and it's actually really cool like seeing it uh, all kind of come together at the end now where do I black line I black line anything that is kind of a hard edge so for example for the bolter here I'll do it there I can actually run it around the ribbing of the clip let's do that and what it does is it just brings out that extra little bit of pop what's really nice is when you get a contrast between two different colors it works especially well so for example if we're looking at the skull here I can basically black line around the outside of the skull and you get this nice little bit of depth now the old school way of doing this of course the old GW way was to pr uh, prime with black and then build all your colors up and you always leave those edges but that was crazy that was like infuriatingly nuts so um, this is a really good way to, to approach this now even things like the purity seals on the back right you can just draw on the line in between the two and then you can use your marker uh, to just write your purity seal uh, seal kind of text and so I'll do that and then I'll finish off with a big sword here and so you can kind of work on your purity seals it's a bit too crossy let's make it a sword and so you can actually go and you can you know literally write out all your purity seals uh, great for you know colors you name it so anywhere where two colors meet or where you have a hard edge you can just black line around and it's especially good with the black armor so I'll work my way around all these guys and again it's a little bit of work but it's really good for popping out the black uh, against that charcoal eschen gray there all right the boys are done now I'm going to save off to a second part their heraldry their squad markings and a few other details like water transfers. So I'm gonna do all that in a second video. However, let's wrap this first one up by saying, wow, they look great. I really like the red and the black and the contrast. And I think, I think there's lots and lots of flavor. Um, obviously when you finish up the bases, it really frames off, really frames off the, the color choices and all that as well. Uh, you can actually get a little bit of extra personality here. You'll see with the uh, purity seals, you know, you can do little Imperial Eagles and, you know, these little write-ups here. I think I might do a tutorial in the future about uh, doing the Purity Seals. So I uh, really like it. Really think it's coming together quite nicely. And I uh, can't wait to get the uh, get the iconography on these guys. Um, get the, the, the heraldry done uh, on, the, on the shoulder plates of the, uh, of the sergeant here. And then, of course, get all the squad markings on the knees as well. So I guess that is that for this one. Uh, we'll see you in part two.